Good morning. It's good to see everybody this morning, and it's always good to be in the Lord's house as we give God our thanks and praise for God's grace to us this day and every day. We begin this morning by lighting our Advent wreath as our second week of Advent. Praise to you, O God, our salvation, who Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance, trusting his promise of grace. Let us confess our sin. Everlasting God, you love justice and you hate wrongdoing. We confess the fear, greed, and self-centeredness that makes us reluctant to work against oppression. We are complicit in systems of exploitation. We choose comfort over courage. We are careless with creation's bounty. Look upon us with mercy. Turn our hearts again to you. Make us glad to do your will and to walk in your ways for the sake of our waiting world. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God clothes you with garments of salvation and covers you with robes of righteousness. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant is eternal, and God's blessings rest upon us all. Amen. Let us sing together our gathering song, Prepare the Royal Highway, number 264.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the reading. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion. 
Herald of good tidings, lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. Word of God, word of life. Uh, this morning we'll, we will read a portion of Psalm 85 alternately, beginning with the organ side in the light printed verse. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord, and you have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord and shall prepare for God a pathway. Our second reading is from 2 Peter chapter 3. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not s slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and, the, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this world, what sort of persons ought you to be? in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hating the day of God. Here in the wilderness, proclaiming about of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People from the whole city and outside, all people of Jerusalem, go on and were baptized and and wild And the one who is in the power of God is coming at me. I am not worthy to stoop down.
Let's pray. Lord, we are about to These days, it can often seem bleak. The weight of the world and all of the problems that we have, we can wonder what God is up to in all of this mess. Why is God silent? Why does God seem absent from so much that is going bad in the world today? And I certainly understand why people would be feeling this way. I don't even have to mention this morning all of the bad things that we are experiencing in our world today. We all know pretty much what they are. I will mention that I was at the Greater Concord Interfaith Council meeting this week, and it was held at the synagogue in Concord at Temple Beth Jacob. And Rabbi Robin, she gave the opening devotions. And she told us of the pain that she and her community are experiencing in these days. The pain of people that are suffering in her community, that are suffering from what happened in Israel on October 7th, and the pain of hearing and seeing so much anti-Semitism in our country. I could feel her pain in those moments. I also just feel it necessary this morning to acknowledge the same pain felt by Palestinians in Gaza and in the West Bank. We also had a presentation that night of the New Hampshire Council on Suicide Prevention. And we were told that suicide has passed homicides as the number one cause of death in the United States. In both those presentations, I felt the weight of the world the weight of living as human beings that are suffering from mental illness that make us harm ourselves, the weight of living as human beings that wage war on each other, the weight of things by the way, in 400 years. I want you to think 400 years ago from now. That's a long time. A lot, lot of tightly to the scriptures. They held in faith that God's silent did not mean that God wasn't at work. They still prayed and went to temple. Perhaps we are simply in that same time. And I want to say to all of us this morning that God is still very active in your life and in the world. God is still here for us. And all the things that we are experiencing or going through, God is still in our lives. That's why faith is so important. It stops us from falling into a pit of despair. It reminds us that God is always making the path straight. 
God is always coming to bring us comfort and joy. Especially in these days, we wait for days for we wait for peace. Peace in a world torn apart by world war, peace in our hearts filled with worry and loss, peace in a country divided by race and class and gender and oh so many things. We wait for the voice that will cut through all those things and make things clear. We wait for in this time, we, what we wait for in this time is for God to come and make things right. In faith, we keep moving forward because we believe that God one day will make the path straight. I was uh, talking to a dear friend uh, a couple of months ago, and I was sharing with her all the things that have gone on in my family over the last two years. I hadn't talked to her in a long time, but it was two years ago. I had to talk to her and all the things that Vicki and my kids have faced in these two years, and how those two years were really, really hard. It was hard to know, for me, how to be a good dad and a good husband. It was hard to know the right thing to do all the time. It was an emotionally difficult time. And she asked me, did your faith help you in that time? And I told her that I would not have made it through that time without my faith. I would not have been able to wake up each day and deal with the day as it was without God as my constant companion. And I bet. I bet that if I asked any of you about a difficult time in your life and how your faith helped you, that you would probably give a similar answer. Our faith is not just, by the way, for our individual lives, but also our collective lives. Jesus doesn't just come for us, although certainly that as well, but for the whole world. John invites us all to come and prepare for this action of God. And what is offered is more than merely our individual salvation but a much broader movement that brings justice and peace to the world, a movement that is set off with the power of the Holy Spirit. My faith is that all of the things we see in the world today are merely temporary, that the true power of our faith lies in the ability to keep moving forward even while things seem lost or godless. In faith, I believe that indeed, even now, peace is truly possible. And I will continue to search it out, pray for it, and find it in my own life. I will continue to have faith that we will have peace someday. God will come again, and then we will have it. I will continue to look into our world and to find God there. To look for the crazy man in the wilderness proclaiming baptism that prepares us for something even greater coming. I will look for the one who comes to prepare us so that when God does show up, the path is straight and clear. And for me, that's exactly what Christmas is about, isn't it? It's about faith. I've been watching a lot of Christmas movies lately, as I do during this season, and I notice in those Christmas movies, even our secular celebrations of Christmas are about faith. Faith in things that we cannot see. Faith in things that don't always make sense, like a jolly man from the North Pole racing a sled across the world to deliver presents. That story we tell is about faith. And its power and significance is for all who believe in it and what it means to give, some, to give gifts away without expecting anything in return, that we have joy, peace, and love in our lives. The weight of the world's problems might, think, might make things seem bleak this Advent. It might appear that we are living in a time of God's silence. But if we can see things through the eye of faith, if we can see that God is at work even amongst the terrible things in the world and in our lives, in faith we hold on to all the best things about God and our lives. May you all have faith this Advent season. And may you know that God is not silent, but just preparing us for Jesus to come this season. Amen. Let us rise and sing our hymn of the day, Comfort, Comfort, Now My People, number 256.
Having heard the good news, let us confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He is seated at the heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Send forth your faithful people with words of promise and forgiveness. Teach your church to be bold in revealing your good news in word and in deed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Reveal your majesty in mountain peaks, flowing rivers, and blossoming wilderness roads. Heal the earth where it longs for renewal. Bring wholeness to the earth and to all its creatures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Turn the hearts of the nations towards righteousness and peace. Increase cooperation for justice between countries, commonwealths, political parties, and diplomatic leaders. In times of prosperity, direct leaders to be generous for the sake of all. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Comfort your people with tender words of love and healing. We pray especially for the Solberg family. Jane, Roland, Chris, Nicole, Linda, Barbara, Herbert, Brad, Stephen Q, Maya L, Peter, the Kendall family, Marie, Jim, Ingrid, Lucy, Erica, Liesel, Jess, Joanne, Carol, Rich, the Oliva family, Ruth, Zoe, Helen, Rob, Alva, Sharon, Kirsten, Bruce, and Judy. We remember our homebound, Betty Lee, and we ask that you care for all who serve our country, including Joshua, Daniel, Gus, Isaac, and Graham. Surround all who are grieving, especially the friends and family of Helen, Kay, Ernest, Eileen, Judy, Danny, Heather, Hayden, Frank, Mark, Gail, Toby, Florence, Aaron, Joe, Eugene, Bill, Doris, and Alice. Support all who know depression or anxiety or all who feel lonely or forgotten. Be a steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant holy patience to all who are waiting for this season. Give hope to those seeking employment. Bring reassurance to people awaiting new diagnoses or treatments. Protect expectant parents. Watch with those who keep bedside vigil. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With you, a thousand years is like a day. Bless the memory of the saints from ages past in the anticipation of saints yet to be born. Inspire us to live with faith as we await your new heaven and new earth. Merciful God. Hear our own prayers may be offered aloud or in our hearts. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. You. Let's share God's peace with our neighbor.
Let us rise as we sing our offering hymn, O Bless the Gifts. Let us pray. God, our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join our unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you from your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It is our teaching and our tradition that we do not celebrate at the Lutheran table, we celebrate at the Lord's table. And the Lord invites everyone here, everybody watching online, to come and share in this feast of God's mercy and God's grace. You may be seated.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, in bread and cup, you have revealed your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release. Brought to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 A couple of announcements this morning. Uh, the first is uh, uh, at 1230 today is our adult Christmas luncheon. Uh, if you're going, uh, you, you pay the church. The church will pay the bill. So it's $27 per person. You can put it in the plate. But just make sure you d put on somewhere that that's where it's going to go for that money. Um, we do have a couple open spots. If you happen to be free and you want to come, let me know after church, and we'll be happy to have you with us. Um, December 10th, next Sunday, is Vicki and I's open house. So after the 10 o'clock service, we'll go to the Parsonage, and we'll have some food together. And we will have Pastor John's Christmas quiz, which this year is uh, 19, Christmas in 1970s. So if you like bell bottoms and disco music, it is the quiz for you. Uh, after our open house, we are going to Franklin, New Hampshire, uh, to assisted living where Carl Grant, one of our members, is currently living. And we'll be singing for the residents there if you'd like to join us for that following uh, worship, uh, following the open house. Uh, December, yeah, December 19th at the Teetotaler, which is downtown, is Tea and Tunes. So we sometimes we have beer and hymns. This is Tea and Tunes. We're going to drink tea or coffee or whatever at, at the Teetotaler and sing Christmas songs or whatever other hymns you might want to sing. So come out for that. That'll be a fun night. Uh, the Christmas box is in the back. So for those who don't know, uh, if you have a card for someone in the church, you can put it in that box and save yourself the postage and instead use the money you would spend on the postage to help somebody in need. That's the idea of the Christmas box uh, so that you spend money on, on other things. Speaking of people in need, the giving tree, this is what you can spend your money on that you don't spend on postage. This is great. In the back, in the narthex, there's a tree. It has tags on it. The red tags are for our kids in our school. Um, so those gifts, if you pick up a red tag, those gifts come back wrapped. The other tags are for, um, are for other kids, uh, foster kids. Those come back unwrapped. You got that? I'll say it again because I know it's confusing. If you pick up a red tag, wrapped. And those are for the kids at our school. We are having a uh, Christmas party for them, and Santa comes and gives gifts to all the kids. So... Um, uh, and then, uh, so those are wrapped. The other ones are for foster kids and unwrapped. Both, please make sure the tag, you bring back the tag and put it on whatever gift, uh, wrapped or unwrapped, we need the tag back. Yes, Linnea. Uh, uh, just to remind them that the giving tree for the kids in foster care is almost a couple thousand dollars. Thank you very much. So if you happen to be back by um, the 16th, you're going to get it on the 17th. So it's always there. Well, I'm just going to say this. Everybody bring them back next week because th this will just be clearer so you don't have to remember two dates. Everybody bring your presents back by next Sunday because we need to have the, the, the What's One Heart presents back by next Sunday. So sorry, Lene, I don't mean to jump on you. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you could everybody just bring them back by next Sunday, then there's no confusion. That would be very helpful. So by next Sunday, all the gifts need to be, to be back. Okay. I, I'm not going to go over the Christmas Eve schedule. Uh, look online, and you can find it there. Just because I don't want to confuse, add more confusion to my announcements. There we go. Great. Thank you very much. All right. And now the God of peace bless, bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope, and the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Let us rise as we sing our sending song on Jordan's bank, the Baptist cries, number 249.
Go in peace. Keep awake.